Three, Fish and chips. Two, one, let's do this. Okay, I'm Scott. Hello, Scott. I'm just going to ask you some questions that yeah. I've been wondering yeah. about. Okay, so first, how did you become successful and where did you learn what you know today? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, it's a bit like you, Scott, really. I, I really enjoyed being at school and had a good time, but I was always doing different things. So when I got good at one thing, I went off to be good at something else. And yeah. That turned out to be really quite handy. And that made my parents despair a bit. But um, yeah, so that was quite good. Yeah. So, I, so I tried to, you know, did a bit of, bit of maths, bit of English, bit of science, bit of PE, bit of everything. And so, that, so I've ended up being quite good at everything, but not brilliant at anything. And that's quite a good thing to be, I think. Yeah, it, it's annoying about getting things. It, I, I um, see one thing and then I want to do that and then I see another thing and I want to do Yeah, me too, things, so me too. And that's okay. I think as long as you do well, do the bit you're doing well at the time and then go and do the next bit, and you can join it all up a bit later. And then and I, I, I quite enjoy sailing and I found, I found that was really good because it was sport and a bit of science and a bit of physical work and a, it's a bit like playing a game of chess. Racing boat. So yeah, I found I found a really sport. Really good at chess. My granddad inspired me to play chess. Oh yeah, I like chess. It's really good. Okay, so secondly, what inspired you to start using computers? Oh well, that's pretty easy. When I went to do my degree, I went to university as a young student, and this was a long time ago. It was in the 1960s, and they had computers, but the computers were bigger than this room, huge room. Wow. And you had to wear you had to wear a special hairnet before you went in. You had to wear socks on your feet because any little speck of dust would stop it all working. I thought it was a bit like being in a movie. It was like science fiction, so I quite enjoyed like Star that. Star Trek. It was just like Star Trek, uh, only not quite as smart. So I really enjoyed that. And then, because computers got smaller, the little down, down to little tiny things. So I, and I was teaching when the very first computers were put into schools, and uh, I, c I could see how excited by the, see how excited uh, you are with all this stuff, you know. So I got quite, I got quite carried away with it already, and I learnt to program. I learnt to write my own programs, and that the very first program I wrote, I wrote was a, a talking word processor where you you type things and then it read them back to you. As you yeah, programming, it. starting to program and learning programming is really hard. Yeah, it is. It's a bit. You have to sort of keep thinking about it all the time. So if yeah. you if you think about it, then stop and think about your lunch, and then come back and think about it, you forget it. So you have to really keep it. It's a bit like juggling. Yeah, you you've got to keep to it really all patient if you are going to yeah. program. Yeah, you do. Yeah, proper patience. But it's good fun. Yeah. It's good fun. You can do anything. You can do, you can do anything, yeah. Including naughty things, which are quite good fun sometimes. Yeah. Okay, my <laughs> final question is, do you intend to make further programs for our new school? Yeah, I'm, I'm properly excited about the school. Um, I'm lucky enough to be working in a few schools around the world. And they're all watching here. You know, Australia's watching here, China's watching here. America's watching here, so you're, you're kind of world famous, you guys, you really are, you've got the whole world looking at you. So I'm pretty excited to see what you're going to do with the opportunity. I mean, this isn't me telling you what the school should be like, we're building a fabulous school. That it's really about what you think and what you think should happen. Um, and all the schools where the, where the students really say, tell you what, I know what we could do, those are the ones that go really fast, so I'm pretty excited just to be hanging on your coattails really, see where you go with all this, but um, the buildings are great, the school's great, you've got some great teachers and some good students, it's going to be, uh, how old are you at the moment? I'm 10, wow. I'm the youngest person in the class. Wow. So you're, you're one of those rare people who lived in the last century and will go right through this century and you'll still be alive in the next century, so you, yes. you're going to live in three centuries. How cool is that? So you're going to need your brain to be pretty smart by the time we get to yeah. the 22s, you know, wow. If they take technology to the next level. Oh, I think, I think it's, technology gets better because you need computers to design computers, so when the computers get better, you get better computers, so it gets faster and faster. I bet before you leave school you'll have smart glasses that you know will look at people and say, oh, I know what your name is. Yeah, they have them in China. They have <laughs> they do. Uh, goggles they do. that you can uh, um, see like around space when yeah, you put them on. So and all sorts. Little sort of TV screens, a bit of data. And, and I've just actually thought of a question. Yeah. If you did, do you have an ancestor that was good at computers also? I did actually. My dad was, um, in fact, it's a funny thing, but there used to be a television program called Tomorrow's World. And, and my dad was on it and I was on it at different times. And he, he invented the machines in, when you go into a big factory 
the machines that do all the automatic, you know, sort of yeah, making the cars. Buttons, yeah, exactly, all that. He, he, he invented all that, so he was a pretty clever chap. That's really so I, I was able to pinch some of his ideas. But, you know, you'll, you'll be better than your mum and better than your dad, and your children will be smarter than yeah, you. I didn't Imagine really how know smart your grandchildren will be. I didn't really know if there was anyone in my family doing computers. Not that I knew of, anyway. I mean, my dad, he plays games, but he doesn't really... Well, playing games is, is quite good, games, because... Yeah. The world, the world we're all in is going to be full of unexpected things. It'll always be a big surprise what tomorrow brings, who knows. When you play a game, it's always, it's always surprising. You think, I never quite know what's around the next corner. Yeah. So games get you kind of ready for unexpected stuff. You know? So playing games is good. You play games with your dad, that'd be time well spent, really. You know? And you don't have to be good at computers, you just have to be good at scratching your head and thinking. That's what you need to be. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think. Should we uh, move on to Brandon's questions? Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. Um, uh, how do you think technology will improve in the future? Well, when I was your age, mm -hmm. um, I used to read a comic, uh, and it was all full of the things that were about to happen. And they had jetpacks, you know, you put on your back and then everybody would be flying around. And uh, they imagined that robots would be doing all the work, and we'd just be having a bit of a good time, really. So. I don't think people have been very good at guessing what the future is going to look like. But I think the three things that are really going to change is it's going to be much more global. You'll be, before you finish leaving Ipaca, you'll be working with children in other countries and other places as part of your everyday classroom. So I think you're sort of a world citizen, which is quite cool. You know? <laughs> I mean, there are, kids, there are kids now doing really interesting stuff in Australia and Spain and all who are interested in what you're doing and they know. They know what's happening in Portland, they know what you're doing, they'll watch this video. So, you know, and hi, it's Brendan. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think it'll be global. I think people will be allowed to do things quicker. I don't think you'll have to wait till you're 21. Like on the iMac, so say you click on a program. Yeah. Yourself. I think everything will happen a lot faster. And uh, the, the, the computers I started on when I was very young, you kind of turn them on and you go off and make a cup of coffee while the computer started up. Whereas you know this one, I just I just Stop. open the lid and it starts. So they will get they get faster and faster. It's quite interesting. I wonder what they'll do with all that brain power. They play a pretty good game of chess now. So. <laughs> all right. Um, next question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you, um, how did you can you ask you anything you like, really. How so. How did you become an Apple master? Oh, that was really interesting and, and lots of fun. Um, you've been doing some research, haven't you? Uh, they picked 52 people who were supposed to be famous and were doing interesting things with technology. And people like Harrison Ford and um, oh, some really, really Nelson Mandela, some really interesting people, Damien Hurst. And it's 51 famous people and me, so I felt pretty flattered to be in the, in the party. I was quite excited. And we, we had some really, we did some really interesting events right just at the beginning of. Being able to make videos with computers, we we all got together. John Hurt, who's you know you might have seen in the in the movies, um, and some others, and we all made we all made a movie, each of us with one school student who were about your age actually, funnily enough. So we had some good parties, good fun. They were a bit mad, but it was a nice thing to be part of. You know? <laughs> it's all good fun. It was a lot of fun, yeah, because they they were all people who were thinking a little bit differently. And so when we got together, it was, golly gosh, it was good. You know, when, when you get together with your mates and you're swapping yeah, ideas, yeah, yeah. you know what a buzz that is, it's good. So these were just like, we were big kids, really. <laughs> yes. Um, and we got lots of cheap kit as well, which helped. So that was, that was a plus, you know. <laughs> right, um, so a question I just made up yeah. in my head. Um, how, how good fun is it making devices for all over the world and people? It, How does it, feel? it feels pretty good actually, um, and the, the best bit in my life actually is when I come back to places, and uh, and the mums and dads or the teachers say, "You'll never guess what's happened to us, our kids," <laughs> and I said, "No, I really will guess because I know it's going to be pretty good." And then they show me what's going on. Wow, and I'm always surprised by how well. Uh, I'm very ambitious for how well they're going to do, but I'm always surprised at how well they do. That's a pretty good feeling actually. That does feel pretty cool. Now, um, technology has improved over the years. Yeah. Uh, we've been getting faster laptops. Yeah. Like smaller, battery life's smaller. got better, yeah. less weight. 
has Apple ever thought of making it better phones? Because well, it's not just Apple. I mean, there are lots of people who are making yeah, good, no. good, good kit. I mean, I, like I, Samsung. Yeah, ab absolutely. I think some of the Samsung devices at the moment are very good. And there's, um, mm. there's some, there's some Mozilla phone coming out this week. The week they're phoning this, so everybody's inventing new things. I think what they've all tried to do really well is make their stuff easy to use. Yeah. And I think so that's bing, bing, bing. yeah. You just you know you open, you pick, you turn, you know you yeah. play with a It's very tactile. And I, and, I th and I go back to before they even had mice, when you had a, just a screen, with this black screen with green print on it, and you had to type some gobbledygook to get it to do anything. And they were pretty exciting. So when we, when we had a mouse, you know, and a cursor moving around, I was thinking, well, wow, this is science fiction. You know? And now we've got tablets of all sorts, really. So I, it does, I think it gets easier to use. You'll have seen the difference, because have you, got, have you got younger brothers or sisters? Yeah, or? I got younger. And I've got my younger sister, my younger, older sister. Okay, and so your younger sister, I bet she can still work a phone. I'm the oldest. Uh, yeah. And I bet you, have you got grandparents around? Yeah, I have grandparents. And grandparents suddenly can use all this stuff as well, so that's what, so suddenly everybody can use it. I was watching a video the other day of a dolphin using an iPad, you know, <laughs> and that was quite impressive. I thought, wow, fish are doing this stuff now, or mammals, or mammals. <laughs> so I think getting easier makes it, makes it really interesting. Have you got any pets? Uh, yeah, a cat and a dog. Well, it would be interesting, wouldn't it, if ten years from now we had computers that cats could use. You'd have got an interesting chat with your cat. Yeah. <laughs> so what's it like being a cat? Pretty good, actually. You know? <laughs> I sleep, you feed me. You know? <laughs> but it'd be nice to have those conversations we've never been able to have before. So that kind of describes the first question in a way. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it does. No, it absolutely does, doesn't it? Um, another question made up in my mind. Hmm. <laughs> that's what your mind's for, that's right. <laughs> um, like, is your, what's your favourite part about the whole technology? Is it iPads, iPhones, you know? I think, I think actually, my, my answer's a bit rubbish really, because my favourite thing's always my latest thing, you know. <laughs> And I really like to feel the progress. So I've got, I've got the moment I've got a little iPad, and I was pretty excited when I had a big iPad, and probably when I get a thumbnail iPad, you know, I'll be excited by that. And when I get smart glasses, where I can, you know, see if your socks are clean by looking yeah, at like the feet. Every new thing. <laughs> every new thing. I love it. I love new things. You know. So but I don't love them just because they're cute. I love them because I see what people do with them. And for me, it's. I mean, I remember when we put the very first mobile phone into a classroom in the early 1990s and, we, and it was a great big thing with an aerial on top you know it's like a suitcase it's huge you've seen them in the movies you know and we said to a, a, um, a little girl she probably about about your age maybe slightly younger we said if you had these in the classroom what would you do with them and she said i'd phone up people in france and practice speaking french which was just such a good idea so i think new technology and your ideas that's what gets me really excited you know? Yeah. New technology and new ideas. And I've had to the digital readers. Ah, you're excellent. I really like that idea. Um, and it really, it really is down to you. You know, people, your teachers won't be as imaginative as you'll be about how this could all work. It really is your ideas. And there's little digital leaders and big digital leaders, and together, what it sound about? Just together we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you will. I think it's a really nice idea. Other schools have already copied that idea from here. So things that happen here immediately go off around the world and people copy them and say, oh, they're doing that in my pack. Yeah, no, well, it's, it's sharing. I mean, it's not, you know, it's, uh, it's research more than stealing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but you're a bit, so you're, you, you, can, you can be first, but you'll never be only. Other people will do what you do. They're doing it already.